and now <laughs> what you came for. <laughs> Mark Russell uh, is truly one of the great humorists in American history. He's also a great friend of the Jackson Center. Mark tells me that as a U.S. Marine, he came under fire every time he played the piano. <laughs> Mark Russell. Thank you, Stan Lundeen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, reverend fathers, reverend mothers, distinguished members of the Jamestown High School class of 1922, Remaining guests of the Athenaeum left over from the summer, living and dead, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, how are you? In preparation for this auspicious occasion, I was given a, a packet of, of information from the Jackson Center, all of their, their brochures and a big uh, packet weighed about 50 pounds. And in there was a group of menus, printed menus, from, well, John mentioned one of them, uh, of past dinners honoring Robert Jackson, dating back to 1936. And there was one where he was being honored. He was Solicitor General, and they listed the whole uh, format of the evening, the, uh, the grace before meals and the, and the menu, the roast beef and, uh, and an unnamed fish, and... Um, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> no, nothing, don't connect that. And, um, and then it had the list of guests and the list of speakers and then the, and the benediction. And then uh, the next item on the agenda was called Fun and Frolic. <laughs> so here I am, and um, I am proud uh, to be the chairman of the Robert H. Jackson Center Subcommittee on Fun and Frolic. I don't know... I, I don't know what to do first, the fun or the frolic. I mean, I don't know. The fun, what do you want, the fun first or the frolic first? I don't know. But anyway, uh, I first met Greg Peterson exactly 10 years ago, coincidentally, and he was getting ready to open some kind of a center. I wasn't too sure about it. And he came to me for some advice about how to go about this, you see. And uh, he said uh, he was basically a very shy person and did not enjoy speaking in public at all. <laughs> and uh, what should I do? So I said, well, uh, the name of the game, Mr. Peterson, is, uh, is publicity. And, and, and even on a casual basis, you, you work it into the conversation. You bring up this person, Robert Jackson, in conversation. See? And he said, really? <laughs> I said, yes. And also think about printing up some brochures, <laughs> leaflets. And he said, really? I, yeah. And since you are a legal organization, think about inviting some prominent attorneys. He said, really? Prominent, like Elliot Spitzer? No, 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 no. Like, no, no, no. Supreme Court justice. Oh, well, yeah. And, and, and so that, the name of the game is advertising, and a good example would be that of Geico Insurance. My God, I mean, they're all over the place. And, you know, you want to be as well known as that, see? You know, you know you've, seen, you've seen the guy in the Geico commercial says, uh, well, switching to Geico save you 15% or more on car insurance? Does Greg Peterson ever talk about Robert Jackson? <laughs> like that, so. Now the, the Petersons have a beautiful home in, in Lakewood, and Allie and I have been there a number of occasions. And, uh, and I often wonder what it's like in the winter. You know, a lot of you folks live here year round. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Nothing personal, but I'm getting the hell out of here right after <laughs> this. So, so we can imagine uh, Greg and Cindy uh, in the middle of winter, you know, and the wind is howling, you know, and they're snuggled by the fire, you know. And 
reading uh, to each other uh, transcripts of the Karamatsu case, you know. <laughs> and the Jehovah's Witness case. You know. But like many married couples, Greg and Cindy don't see eye to eye on everything. Uh, one time a few years ago, some Jehovah's Witnesses actually came to their door and they, they rang, rang the doorbell and Cindy immediately ran upstairs, flung open the window and poured a bucket of water on them and told them to bug off. So there's never a dull moment around <laughs> the Peterson house with Greg and Cindy and Robert Jackson and their three dogs, Goebbels, Goering, and Nuremberg. Put Jamestown there on the map. Greg did. Who wore two hats and also a ball cap? Greg did. Who made the Jackson Center a mecca for scholars, one and all? The sword who came to town and never even heard of Lucille Ball. Who is clairvoyant in his own right? Greg is who channels Robert Jackson each night. Greg does, says Cindy, they're in bed. Could you at least talk to me instead? It's either Robert Jackson or me. I'm a desperate housewife. It's either Robert Jackson or me. So, When Phil Donahue was at the Jackson Center a few months ago, and he spoke eloquently about some of these cases, he focused on the Jehovah's Witness case, um, West Virginia Board of Education versus the Barnett Sisters. And Phil Donahue quoted Justice Jackson, and we have to hang on to something, and he, he called it a fixed star. That's it. You got to hang on to something a fixed star in our constitutional constellation. And I thought, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to memorize it like Phil did because it's so profound. And with your permission, I'd like to, I'd like to sing it as well. I got a piano here. If there is any fixed star, if there is any fixed star, if there is any fixed star in our constitutional constellation, it is that no official, high or petty, can prescribe what shall be orthodox in politics, nationalism, or religion, or any matters of opinion or force citizens to confess by word or by act their faith therein. Wow. So, So, my friends, thank you, God bless you, God bless the Robert Jackson Center. Thank you very much, my friends, indeed.